now is the time. Forever? Tangent. Hold. Halt. On Hashtag always MGM. You are approaching Everybody the unloading area. Calm down. AK Hades. But what if it could a salute to all theme parks, but mostly Walt Disney World. Ha! What a cute ending. Aloha! And Don't dillo it. This is Theme Park Thursday with Dillo's Diz. She is Jen. Hello! And I am Frank, and we are here once again at Dillo'sDizResort.com. That, of course, is our Patreon with memberships beginning as low as $1 per month, DillosDizResort.com. That $1 gets you into our one-channel Discord, which is world-renowned, yeah, world-famous. Yeah. Everyone knows about it. Everyone's talking about the one Everyone. Channel. I can't go anywhere anymore. I mean, there's a lot of timidness and trepidation about people entering the one-channel Discord as well. But come in. Come join us. Come join us. The one-channel Discord. Uh, here... Uh, such as this, this Theme Park Thursday recording, and the upper levels, the upper, the moderate, and the deluxe guests. You get to see uh, the live stream in action as we record along the way. So that's that's what happens at DillosDizResorts.com. Just, just putting it out there. Just saying. It is a Monday night prior to Theme Park Thursday. Uh, uh, two uh, two things happened just quickly to touch on today that are theme park related, and then and then we'll get into it. Did you say quickly? Did you say you're going to touch on things quickly? Famous last word. Uh-huh. Uh This morning, and I mean, I guess it's twelve hours later at this point, but it was a bit of breaking news. Extra. Extra breaking news. Turn that kid around. It was announced that a, a new CEO to the Walt Disney Company was coming, uh, not in 2024, not in 2025, no, no, but maybe in and around the time that Jen enters the Forever 44 Fedora Club at the 44. How dare you! <laughs> How dare you make that connection? Um, there was a new chairman announced, and uh, so that CEO connection was there. Uh, thus begins, you know, we need something to talk about once this election cycle ends. So once that is over, we'll be talking about who will be the next Disney CEO. I mean, for- that's where everyone will go. Everyone will go right from the presidential race right into the Disney CEO. That's how that works. <laughs> uh, do you think there's any connection? Last week we did a live stream about the introduction of the Premier Pass. Do you think the uh, well-received response to that announcement has anything to do whatsoever with this? Is there a connection at all to this you're not going to see another CEO for at least an announcement anyway for another 14 months or so. Who could say? Who understands anything about <laughs> decisions being made at this point? Who knows? I I mean, if we are, um, if we can speculate a little bit, yes. I think there could be a tag team of Woody and Buzz because that's when the new Toy Story comes out. <laughs> so I'm just saying that maybe they just turn it over to the characters. If you if you want to also really get people in on the Disney Hulu ESPN bundle, yeah. let's make this a competition reality show style. I'm just saying. Oh my goodness! Maybe maybe just put them all on Dancing with the Stars. I would also accept that as someone who now regularly watches Dancing with the Stars. Thank you very much, eight year old. Uh, Have you done the leg thing? Have you seen that the leg thing is now a TikTok trend? Well, I, uh, what, uh, what is her? Oh, Whitney uh, danced. Yeah. Uh, so she did the. She was laying down, and he pulls her up by the leg. Yeah. It's now a TikTok trend. Everybody's do do doing it. Do we need to do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> All I do is watch this, and I go, I, "My abs can't support me." In that, how do I? And if someone's pulling my leg, 
no pun intended, is mm-hmm. someone pulling my leg. Am I not like, like, I have no strength to, my muscle mass is at a zero currently. So, like, if they're pulling, I feel like my leg's going to pop out. I don't know. I don't we get, know. Uh, the next time we're doing Christmas decor at Mama and Papa Dillo's, as we were this weekend, the starting the building blocks, pulling, yeah. pulling things down from the top of the garage, mostly. Maybe a few icicle lights in the okay. gutters. Around you want the to gutters. Put up the icicles. You just want to do that before you go. <laughs> uh, maybe we we just try it just to see what happens. But I forgot about the leg thing. Yes, and as soon as you said it, I was like, "Oh, that thing." Yeah. I I don't think Whitney's going to win this year either. And Whitney yeah, usually goes to this that Whitney. Hmm? She's so good that Whitney. Yeah. I haven't seen this season yet, so um, but I have seen that clip up. Do you do you fear what has become my life? Do you fear that once you put on the Dancing with the Stars for the children, it's a uh no, because first of all, I always watched Dancing with the Stars, so <laughs> it's odd that I'm not watching it as often. And crying. Um, and crying. Well, we know where your crying has been displayed. I know what you're where you're crying currently. Stan. I've just been crying over the Mets constantly instead. But um, yeah, I mean, I would I cry. Uh, first of all, also, I mean, now that we're on a Dancing with the uh, Stars tangent, Disney Plus you know, related. Yes, it, to the Disney Plus corner we go. We yeah, didn't right. even know. Here <laughs> we are. Um, you know, I watched the uh, segment because, again, the TikTok shows me everything I need. I'm not missing anything. TikTok shows me everything I'll ever need yeah. in life. Um, the Derek and his wife and everything they went to. Forget it. I'm a basket case watching that whole thing. And then their dance. First of all, most TikTok clips, if you're putting that up and you're putting up their story, put up the dance immediately following the story. Now I got to go search for the dance and cry at two separate videos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, um, but uh, the kids have seen it a little bit. And we did watch an old Halloween one that came up on the Halloween playlist on Disney+. Plus. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. Uh, listen, Theme Park Rob uh, has a comment in here. Uh, we've <laughs> been talking about new world words in the world lately. <laughs> you know what eat is? Yeah, like, like. <laughs> Theme Park Rob, and I, am I right? If I just do this, like, like you like you punt someone, you you toss them out that you you like throw somebody across the room. I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. So <laughs> like they get is, yeeted. There, I don't know. There is a wrestler in WWE oh, uh-huh. whose whose catchphrase has become yeet. Oh, see? So yeah. everything is yeet. Yeah. And and he's got merch that says yeet. Yeah. Across, so he's and- probably throwing people across the ring. I mean, but yeet, I mean, it's become a big thing. And so uh, when I hear yeet, I just hear Jey Uso going yeet. Right. Uh, but the, the you know, thank goodness Theme Park Rob has young people in uh, his yeah. family that can he's, school us. He's confirming that that's yeah. what it means. See? Yeet, yeet. Um, <laughs> I knew what yeet is. Just because I said you know what yeet is doesn't mean. Oh, that you knew? I uh, knew what yeet was. As a, we, I'm, were I'm, teaching, we were teaching. We were teaching. Yeah. We were teaching Frank words this weekend, such as skibbity toilet. We were teaching him um, mewing, what mewing is. Uh, what else were we? Uh, you know, well, the Rizzler. Was, we were talking oh, about Rizzler. the Rizzler. The right. Rizzler was at the Mets game, game five. Right. On mewing Friday. on the big screen. And I asked Frank if he knew what the kid was doing, and he oh, did yeah. not. So. I was in the same stadium as the Rizzler. I had no idea. Right. I mean, then I we knew had a... he was on the screen, but I didn't know who the Rizzler was. Right. Then we had to call him the 10-year-old to say, hey, can you demonstrate mewing? You know, and these are the things that happen. Uh, yeah. What are we talking about? The Disney what? CEO. Well, the Disney CEO who has not been yeeted yet, but he's about to be. I have to say, after, uh, and I asked, my question was about a connection to last week. <laughs> okay. I feel I will be shocked at this point if uh, our, our friend and yours, Josh Tomorrow, is the next CEO of the Walt Disney Company. You will be surprised if he is or if he is not. If, if he is. If he is. I don't believe he will be. Hmm, that's interesting. It's a hot um, take right there from me. Why do you think he would not? I, be I, 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 I feel that this this little this news today on the heels of that news last week, uh, I feel a Parks mm. uncomfortability there. Interesting. I mean, that could be. I, I don't know. And I'm also like, is 
is my friend Josh Demaro so comfortable in his position at the Walt Disney Comfortable uh, uh, Company that yeah. he's just like, I'll just stay here. I'm good, and I'm just gonna ride this out. Which I think is fine. I think the main uh, thing that Josh has going for him is is the personable side. I think he yeah he has the he'll have that even Eisner esque you know, ability to, I think, connect yeah. with an audience in a way that even Iger can't. Iger's slick. But, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like tomorrow has a more uh, likable quality than a business quality that Iger has. But uh, then I will say the other thing that got announced today was that the uh, Epcot Festival of the Arts dates uh, start. That starts uh january and i've already forgotten the date the 17th yes. something ridiculous like that well after mm -hmm. i you know i saw maz on friday don't be jealous that i saw Maz <sighs> uh -huh. on friday uh -huh. prior to going to the mac, mac game mm -hmm. um so you know maz was excited about you know the possibility still existed at that point that festival of the arts might coincide with her trip in january I don't believe that will be the case now. Mm -hmm. as, uh, I think it's January 14th or the 17th. One or the other. Someone can confirm for me. Val is saying the 17th mm -hmm. after they leave. Yes, the 17th. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be the, uh, you know, I, I it, it's funny. I never thought about it as a thing before. But we were there January 1st through the 7th or the 8th back mm -hmm. in 2018. Right before this podcast started on the mm -hmm. old Improviser's Guide podcast. Old. And uh, and I remember the Festival of the Arts decor being mm -hmm. up in front of Epcot. We only went to Epcot for like half a day back then, um, that week. We went to mm -hmm. Animal Kingdom more, I think, than we did Epcot that week. However, it played out. It played out strangely that week. Mm -hmm. I think we only ended up at Epcot. It was cold, so there was also that. Right. We only ended up at Epcot on that Friday, I feel like, of that week. And uh, I remember the Festival of the Arts, but I don't remember if Festival of the Arts was going on. So I was like, yeah, it was still Christmas decor, but the Festival of the Arts stuff was up. And mm. uh, I don't see why it shouldn't start immediately after the Christmas decor comes down. Yeah, I mean, there's always those little brief little breaks in festivals. I mean, they do the same thing in July going from flower and garden into food and wine yeah, where there's basically yeah. like i feel like this maybe this was a bigger gap this summer i'm not sure but yeah. typically it was like a week and it was like the those times i was there in 21 and 22 it was like that one week i was there there was no festival at all um so yeah well, and we saw that there. because if there was a food and wine festival when we were there in august Hollywood Studios would not have been as jammed as it was yes. on that August 15, 16, 17, whatever that date was, that Friday, that we were in Hollywood Studios. Uh, there was not so scary at the Magic Kingdom and no food and wine at Epcot. It was pandemonium bedlam like I hadn't seen since I worked there. Yeah. At, and and including the holidays, mind mm -hmm. you, at, at Hollywood Studios. Crazy. Hashtag always MGM. Yeah. Uh, Jeff are saying they got to get Communicore Hall turned over from what he expects will be amazing Christmas decor there in Communicore <laughs> Hall. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll do like a whole Dickensian. Uh, <laughs> like, uh -huh. They'll do a whole ghost of Christmas past and I'll bring out the smart one robot and the roller coaster, build your own roller coaster computers. A whistling beaver. And the, and the desk, the IBM desktops that like you had to guess which country based on the puzzle pieces. And then they would play like the national anthem of the country yeah, at the times. end of it. But do we not have that on VHS anywhere? That's all, such good content. I know. Probably not. You know why? Because I feel like we did that before you took over mm. the video camera. Mm. And then mom and papadillo would typically be ordering us some burgers somewhere and oh, so sorry. we were just off doing that so no one was filming us and getting the content i mean right. what a fail yeah. really i mean missing but, out yeah. on the content yes all the years no yeah. you never really talked we you know we did about five weeks worth of meetup uh, reviews <laughs> Also, this is the first time people are hearing just us. All right, everyone okay? <laughs> That's just us again. <laughs> uh, do you uh, want to 
recall because it was kind of momentous that you walked into Communicore Hall, um, you know, after the whole and whole interventions demolition there. Mm-hmm. Granted, mm-hmm. Communicore Hall. How many times I'm going to get to say this without saying it? New it's York style. Difficult. Yes. Um, is on the opposite side of like where you were. What, what were your feelings walking through that area there? Yeah, because someone mentioned interventions. I was like, wait a second, because I am so turned around still looking at like Epcot maps. But I, I believe Moana journey through water, yeah, not imagination, water. nor underwater adventures with Ariel. There's too many journeys, I think, happening at this point, by the way, and attractions. Um, but I think her uh, Moana's attraction there is where my interventions building was. Uh, so then on the other side, communicable, uh, I mean, wh- I don't know. I don't know what to say. I It didn't uh, surprise me as much since I had seen pictures of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just disappointing overall because I feel like there's just this big space. Once again, Disney, you knocked down a building. That mm. people enjoyed on that side of in- interventions, yeah. uh, there was a there's a color uh, color thing like uh, with paint. I don't know. You could also build your own robot over there at one mm-hmm. point. There are a lot of exhibits that people enjoyed. Let's tear down that building and build a building that people have described as a bus terminal, <laughs> a a cross between a scholastic book fair and uh the airport like student union yeah yeah, the student union yes community community college student union yeah uh why are we making this decision especially that (laughs) then you said you were going to take wonders of life finally breathe some life into wonders of life Mm -hmm. and kind of make it what communicore old school kind of was over right. there revamped it a little bit i was excited for that uh we're not gonna do that anymore but look at Core hall look at this wait what what are the decisions disney tell me <laughs> tell me how these happen jeffers is comparing you to papa dillo in front of mickey <laughs> minnie's runaway railway where he just <laughs> thinks about the movie ride disgraceful i wish we had a camera rolling on him at all the fact that we didn't set up a Papadillo cam on his scooter is a fail on our part, really, because yeah. that would have captured him mumbling to himself before we caught on as he just sat there as the wave of disappointment over the great movie ride just settled in on him. And it just really hit him in that moment that it's mm-hmm. not there anymore. That that's speaking of content fails. That's that's on us. Uh, You know, as I've mentioned, I mentioned on the live stream last week uh, when I was uh, doing some Mets commentary during Mm -hmm. game four of the National League Championship Series uh, over on our YouTube channel. uh, I mentioned uh, that I I constantly kind of peruse Jollywood night dates. Uh Like, oh, can I get down to the party, get back to the airport, get back on the plane? Like what what how much money would that take? Uh, and it had, I haven't seen it fall the right way yet, but, uh, I, my question is cause you know, Papa Dillo, he likes the Christmas lights. Yeah. Knowing, you know, that the heat is a factor. Are these parties the more likely scenario for theme park visits in the future for mom and Papa sure. I mean, I think it's good. They're still, they still got to get to the place of going by themselves again. I think yeah. doing all the, all the Papadillo health issues last year. Mm-hmm. But do you think that a merry, merry Christmas party, mm-hmm. Jollywood nights combo is a more likely scenario for them than say getting up early and, you know, waiting to park low, you know, you know what, like a normal right. day. Uh-huh. It is a party scenario something more likely for them in the future? I mean, possibly. I, you know, I think they <laughs> just like I'm picturing it all in my head. Uh, recently, we've talked about TikTok a lot this episode already. I recently saw a TikTok where it says, like, nothing will make you wonder how your parents were able to raise you more than traveling with them. Mm-hmm. Because when you travel with them now as an adult, you're like, how 
How, you took us on vacations. You planned our trips. How? Are, so I'm already in my head going, if they did these parties, they can't do that without us. They can't mm-hmm. go to these parties without us. Um but yeah, I guess I could see that because it is a way to see Christmas decor since there's no Osborne lights. Hashtag bring back the Osborne lights. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that it would be a way to infuse some of that while also having shorter lines for attractions because I think they would typically do a party kind of how we've done the Halloween parties, which yeah. is a little bit of Halloween and a lot of not waiting on long lines for attractions. Right. So I think, you know, that part they would enjoy. And it does make sense that um, that would be a good route for them. I still think you would have to plan it out. Like you have to go here at this time. You have to go here at that time. You yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, <laughs> Jeffers is offering the uh, his room for Mama and Papa Dillo. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you do say if there's another Walt Disney World meetup, you know, mm-hmm. Mama and Papa Dilla would be the hook. I think the third time would have to be the charm for that. Oh, that's true. Just, we'll just see. trying to maybe I'm combining my efforts here. Right. You never know. You, you never, never know. know. We got to get Papa Dillo on the right day. All we got to do is get him on the right day. Because there was a day at some point where it's like, I don't know, mate, when are you going? Maybe. I think after doing the cruise and how we, um, you know, just brought them everywhere in Walt Disney World in 48 hours when yeah. we said we were going to take it easy, probably tired the bad to go. I'm not going back there now for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we got to space that out and plan it properly. And, you know, we have told them before, we're just going to set you up at the quiet pool at a table for mm-hmm. meet and greets and autographs. That's mm-hmm. all. And pictures. That's that's what we're going to do. Uh, speaking of meetup, you know, uh, that meetup last month in September there was uh, Fine Frank for 50. Sure was. And this How many days theme, park, theme Park Thursday episode is the final Theme Park Thursday episode before the actual big day. It is. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm Leave me alone. I'm slowly segueing into this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we have to stay here for a moment. No, oh. I haven't been cranky the whole month of October. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to the Mets. Uh-huh. For the past, since, you know, the last weekend of September, mm-hmm. the, the Mets have taken us on this wild ride. Yep. And that ended on uh, Sunday mm-hmm. with a loss in game six to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yep. And now all I'm left with is the birthday approaching. Yeah. But can you, for the those watching, what? why don't you just move your camera for a second so that people can also see another distraction of yours yeah, so that you did yesterday? Because uh, over the weekend, you know, kind of just, it was the start of the Hallmark movie weekend, mm-hmm. which has now turned into... This is and this is Mrs. Dillo driven now with the eight year old firmly Lord. alongside mm-hmm. going, Yes, this is yeah. the way. Yeah, it's not me. I don't mind. Of course, this is not, this is not, this is not Frank driven. The Peloton, <laughs> it's not the Peloton. How dare you? There's the Christmas tree right there. It's happening. Oh. The Christmas tree is up, the garland is around the archway. Over the TV as well, with an assortment of pumpkins. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whatever makes you happy and distracts you from your birthday more, I guess, right? I mean, so mm-hmm. it's fine. It's fine that my birthday uh-huh. is on the 29th, and it and it'll be and it'll be over. We don't have to talk about it anymore. Eight days from this recording, less than a week from the drop of the episode. That's right. The point is of this episode, though, mm-hmm. yeah, is that the Mets lost. Mm-hmm. We're trying to move on from that. So I, I said to Jen, I said, you know, all all month long, basically, all we've been posting is clips with how can you not be romantic about baseball? Crying every day. And you know, this is Moneyball is a movie that we watch on trips to Orlando <laughs> without realizing that we're both watching it at the same time. 
uh it is a it is a constant uh you know guaranteed good movie to watch on an airline yeah uh if it's on uh, if it's on the cable since i'm still plugged in sure i will let me just side note i mentioned the bundle before with espn Uh uh-huh and hulu and yeah espn you're never getting my bundle money Mm. after your posting <gasps> your your graphics after the Mets lost How you, dare you Los Angeles Dodger homers ESPN. I don't care how close those Disney Studios are to Los Angeles. What are you doing? Why? Why? Why are you taking shots at Grimace? Why? Why are you? Why are you <laughs> posting World Series chains around the neck of Dodger players with the World Series in the OMG letters? What? What does that need for? Did you do that to the Cleveland Guardians? No. Did you do that to the Phillies last week? Or did you do that to the Tigers or the Royals? No. So what are you doing? Why are you doing it to the Mets? What, are you scared of them? Are you scared of them or are you just I'm not don't scared like of them? them? I just don't like them. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't need this energy, ESPN. Yeah. Okay? Mets fans are sad, but you know what? We're very proud as well. So, you know what? You take your negativity in 2024 as if we're not surrounded by it everywhere else and do something with it. It's a family. It's, it's not necessary. You can be happy for the Dodgers if you want ESPN. There's no need for the, the, the subtle jabs at New York. Go join the announcers that were on that game last night. They were Listen, very when the, happy. They when, were when happy the for the Dodgers before the game even started. <laughs> when the National League Championship Series commentators are the Los Angeles Dodgers play-by-play guy and a Hall of Fame Atlanta Braves pitcher. What are we doing? Look at this great play by this Dodgers. Oh, wow. Look at the Mets. They uh, will not give up. He literally said it like that towards the end. These Mets are uh, not going down without a fight. No, we're not an announcer. Okay. Yeah. Vin Scully well, did these World Series games for years. As a Do- and he was the Dodgers play by play guy. You listen to that Kirk Gibson home run call. You don't you don't know where his allegiance lies. Come on. Theme Park Rob said, Oh, we're losing Jen. It's to cover up my sadness. I've been crying at a lot of Mets videos today. <laughs> I have to repurpose to anger. So I said to Jen <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the how can you not be romantic about baseball posts that we've been mm-hmm. doing all month long? I said, okay. Let us, let's try to tackle the World Series as this week starts on Friday. And, you know, they'll they'll be in Yankee Stadium on my birthday. I'm not annoyed by that at all mm-hmm. with your $1,000 plus secondary ticket prices on the StubHub and all of that. That's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would have been so mad <laughs> to if they were playing in City Field for game four. And those mm-hmm. were the ticket prices. Yeah. If they were playing in City Field on my 50th birthday. And a ticket price, secondary or not, was over a thousand dollars. It would not have been good. Yeah. Lightning Lane Premier Pass pricing there. Yeah. So I said to Jen about that. <laughs> <laughs> how can you not be romantic about baseball? I said, let's do a how can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World uh, discussion here uh-huh. for the last half hour or so. Yeah, and with with the folks in the chat, it doesn't have to be like oh, romantic places to have dinner or to propose to your. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for the the moments, the spots, the you know the the surprises that get you swept up in that Disney magic. Uh, that it's like that home run swing from Pete Alonso versus Milwaukee. Oh man, That's if you one. nobody has ever seen me so excited. In their life, and when Peter well, nobody Alonso, did except Mrs. Dillo, so we don't even know what really happened. <laughs> when Pete Alonso hit that home run in Game Five versus Milwaukee, it was the most romantic thing I've ever seen in baseball. Not since I was 11 years old, about to turn 12, and Lenny Dykstra in Game Three of the 1986 NLCS versus the Houston Astros hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth to win the game in Shea mm-hmm. Stadium, rocking. I wasn't there. I was against the wall where the living room meets the dining room and mama sure. and papa Dillos grabbing mm-hmm. the side of the of the archway. Yeah. So I said to Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I 
what if we do a how <laughs> can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World and and come up with times where you just go, oh, my God, this is a perfect Disney moment. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's going to be some positive Disney coming up here. Yeah. It's not premier past discussions. No. It's not. It's not ESPN bundle discussion. No. ESPN. Not, it's not stuff. Dodger announcers discussions. <sighs> it's going to be. <laughs> Magical Disney moment discussions. And if you have them in the chat, drop them in the chat. You can have more than one. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to start. You, what? You have a question. You have a yeah, comment. We can't, we can't go there yet, though, okay, while people fine. think. All right. Come on. Because one, Val had a question earlier that I think has to be addressed. This may be a dangerous question. Huh. Will you root for the Yankees in the World Series? It's a tough one, especially in this case, because uh, my good friend, A. Ali Flores, has been on the podcast multiple times. He's appeared at Dillo's Diz meetups. He has uh, been a groomsman in my wedding, but he is a Los Angeles Dodgers fan. So it's been nothing, nothing but gifts and 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 just I don't like it. So I have that. And then I have the Yankees. And generally, like, especially when I moved to Florida, when I moved to Florida, the Yankees were just about to hit their dynasty. So uh, I liked Jeter and I liked Rivera. I liked Bernie Williams. I liked how they played baseball. So, and I liked Joe Torre, who was the Mets manager when I first started liking baseball. So uh, I had like an uh, inkling, you know, and especially that, they were playing the Braves and everyone around me was the Braves. And, and I was, you know, I had to root for the Yankees in that scenario. So there was, there I created as much as I even started as a Yankees fan in 1981, I was a big Rick Cerrone fan, the catcher who replaced Thurman Munson when he died in the plane crash. I'm going a tangent city all over the place. Jen, do you not know the story of Thurman Munson? No, do I you do not. Do you know, I'm you know, just you, raising my eyebrows at your tangents. You, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you know that there's a video cassette that just says Munson in Mama and Papa Dillo's video cabinet. Oh, we have to go find it. Because it has all the news when Thurman Munson passed away yeah. in, in a plane crash in August 1979. We have to find that. <laughs> that, was a, that was a quick spiral of tangents. So... I rooted, I rooted for the Yankees during that time. So I didn't have, and especially, and even uh, when they would face the Red Sox in the mid-2000s, you know, there was a little bit of, you know, 2003, Aaron Boone, you know, there was a little bit of you know, Yankees, like, okay. Even that, that was after the Yankees beat the Mets in the 2000 World Series. What's the question? <laughs> Will you root for the Yankees? Yes or No. I haven't decided who I'm rooting for in the series yet. Mm-hmm. I don't like the, I mean, the, the, I don't, I'm not attached to the Yankees like I used to. Like, I had the attachments for a while of the mm-hmm. players I liked. I don't really feel that attachment. The Dodgers are a really good baseball team. Mm-hmm. I, I feel right now the inclination is to root for the Yankees because the Dodgers beat the Mets. But mm-hmm. don't quote me by Friday. We'll see. <sighs> um, I guess I should answer. Uh, I don't have as many tangents uh, as Frank, so it should be quicker. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like, oh, well, I am a New Yorker. I should go with the New York team. And since it can't be Mets, it should be Yankees. I've cried over Derek Jeter retirement videos, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, the 10 year old, he enjoys the mm-hmm. Dodgers. Mm-hmm. If I know any other players, <laughs> in the MLB, it's Dodgers players. Every time they were coming out, I'm like, oh, I know. That. Oh, Mookie Betts. The 10 year old has a Mookie Betts shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Freddie Freeman. I don't, I don't know. I just hear him, his name being said all the time. <laughs> Otani, obviously, also another shirt. So, like, there's a love for the Dodgers, not not as much as the Mets, but like there's a love, but a really close second is yeah. the Dodgers. So, obviously, he's going to go the way of the Dodgers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am don't think I have recovered from this season personally (laughs) with the Mets. And I feel sad like I'm leaving 
a movie that I want to watch over and over again. That's how I feel about this season with the Mets. So I'm not ready to commit. Obviously, I don't commit um, to uh, a team right now for the World Series. But I guess I will probably be rooting more for, even though he has said these words, the stinking Dodgers. Mm-hmm. I feel like I probably will go that route because right. of him. And also, before we get into Disney, can Easy. we can we discuss two two more baseball things? Yes, sure. <laughs> did okay. First, did you see the John May John Mayer coming mm-hmm. out with a whole thing? Did you see? Yeah. Did you read yeah. the whole thing? Yes. Yeah, he had a, John Mayer had a very lovely post uh-huh. about uh, Francisco Lindor, yeah. and 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 really, if you watch, go if you do anything after you watch this live stream or listen to this podcast, mm-hmm. uh, go and check out Lindor's uh, interview, post game interview, and just uh, the many ways in which he has grown. This yep, year. yep, and, and and it will it will change you. Yeah, I was down that rabbit hole earlier, um, and. Uh, so there's that who I didn't see that coming today. And did did you cry at the fix you video? Did you cry? Is that the one with the Howie mm-hmm. Rose commentary? Yes. Oh, I don't know what the, I, I didn't catch really what the song was. Oh, so. For God's sakes. Is it's the person? Coldplay fix you song. Put that song to anything. And I'm crying. That song was played in an episode of the newsroom. That oh. my God, as soon as that scene turns, forget it. I'm a mess. That song can be played to anything. So now you're putting that song through a whole history of the Mets this season with Howie Rose behind it. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's it for me for today. I'm just, and I'll torture myself and rewatch this and cry anytime I need a good cry. Yeah. Um, I don't but, think I know that, that Coldplay song well enough to. What? You know what yeet means, but you don't know that cold <laughs> song? I mean, I my biggest problem right now, because all of them, and listen, I know that they're spin, and I know that these guys are also angling to me. Like, like I, I don't want to, like, squash it completely. Either, uh-huh. So I'm going to walk it back. But all those guys talked about family. The idea that they're not all going to be together next year uh-huh. is very troubling for me. I, I can't handle it. The 10-year-old dillowing things on the walk to school this morning he's being such a dillo about everything (laughs) because he's speculating who's not going to be on the team next year and i'm like you don't know he's like this person's definitely going here this person's i go you know nothing right now that is speculation do you know what it means to speculate that is what you're doing and you don't know for sure and we are you are not preparing yourself just because you think it'll be easier later to handle that's not what the game we're going to play right now but yeah, I didn't appreciate that. I I just I love them all so much. And Winker is such a crazy person. And then he's in the post post game interviews. Like, I love these guys. I love them all. Like, I can't. Yeah, we could go on lots of tangents. Okay. But okay. Winker, okay. but Winker, you know, and, and they say it now, you know, everyone says it, but you it, it oozes off of him that he is the player that drives all the other teams crazy. So you know that you want him on your team so you don't get crazy when you watch him play for somebody else. Yeah. I, I love him. He is he is the person cast in my movie immediately. My baseball movie, he is cast immediately. Yeah, you know, they got uh Candelita there, uh Iglesias, they're like, he's not coming back. I'm like, listen. He brought the team together. They're like, they're like, he brought this team together. I was like, you got, they're like, well, all these young infielders. I'm like, who do you, I, you got a, you got Lindor and him to, to try, get all those guys. Uh-huh. They're all, they're all going to get under their wing and then they're all be better too. No Iglesias face. And don't get me started on Alonzo. So don't get me started. Don't. Okay. I'm going to segue though, all of this. I'm going to segue are, the fix you the, conversation. Uh-huh. In into music uh-huh. because I think the whole idea of and we're only almost forty minutes into the podcast. Everybody, we're getting to Disney, so the music that can happen in a movie in general, in a movie, in these uh-huh. Uh-huh. viral videos going around, there are sounds on TikTok. There's one I've just used for three videos in a row on TikTok that will get me that I'm like, oh, this is the exact feeling it's it's 
it explains it it describes the exact feeling you feel when you're in disney just by the music and there was one a long time ago i forget what it's called it might have been like kiss me good night or something mm. that was like old school 2020 tiktok and i used to use that for some um tiktok videos like for disney vibes and like when you think of music in movies and like the shift of a you know, note or whatever it is. It's the same for the BGM in the parks. Mm -hmm. It's the same for the music during the fireworks. It's the same as you're then left at home in your Disney blues, trying to figure out the proper song to put to your Disney video to try to like encapsulate that feeling and the Disney vibes. So I do feel I am segueing that music plays a part in the how can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World vibes. Mm -hmm. Personal. Uh, Lewis is here to say, as a Braves fan, he hopes all the good players leave the Mets. Thank you, Lewis. Lewis. We've moved Agreed. On. And I will say, I uh, I texted you a link to YouTube today of a classic video mm -hmm. uh, of, of about the 1986 Mets called uh, 1986 Mets, A Year to Remember. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I have it, uh, you know, I'm, I have it, I'm listening to it mostly today. Mm -hmm. And the, I, I was laughing because the music in some of the, like they have some of the 80s songs. Mm -hmm. Duran Duran, they have a little, you belong to the city. You know, they have, they have kind of like those uh, classic 80s uh, vibes there with those songs. But then they got the instrumental music and the instrumental music, underneath is part like weird Epcot music mm -hmm. and also video of, uh, you know, remember like the, the little uh, clamshell videos of behind the scenes of Walt Disney world and uh -huh. here's a tour of Epcot. Yeah. Like it's not, it's like weird synthesizer eighties, but not the Disney background music. And it, it was, and it was a little bit of that on that Mets video today. I was like, oh man, there's a reason why I watched this Mets video 7,000 times mm -hmm. because of this weird Disney background music, like music behind the, the most dramatic scenes. Like, boom, like I'm like, this is it. So I ask you, how can you not be romantic about, well, are we there yet? Or do we need to talk about Pete Alonso? No, I think we're there. We're already in it. So are you going to agree that you feel music is also more in the world, the world yes. aside from the 1986 Mets oh, yeah. oh, video sorry. that you're watching on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> we'll drop that link in the Discord after so you all can watch the 1986 Mets a year to remember. Are we moving on? What's happening? <laughs> Um, so we, uh, yes, I agree that music is a part of it. And really the first one I was going to drop 10 minutes ago before you said, wait, we're not there yeah. yet uh -huh. was if that spectral magic fanfare plays at night while mm -hmm. you're standing on main street, how can you not be romantic about Walt Disney world? Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. That is I, how that parade has not come back in some reimagined form confounds me yeah disney you need to have i'm you, if you have this nighttime parade thing you're talking about coming to walt disney world you gotta bring it you mm -hmm. gotta bring the magic it's gotta have an evolution from main street electrical parade and spectro magic it has to go because you could make the same argument for the fanfare of main street electrical parade 100 percent mm-hmm I, if you argued with me on that, I would totally not dispute it. Yeah. That spectral magic music though, is it for me yeah. right yeah. there? How can mm -hmm. you not be romantic about Walt Disney world when the spectral magic music is playing? I think I said it last week. I, my biggest regret, regret <laughs> of being a regret. Regret. Oh, wabbit. Wabbit. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest regret of being a cast member is I never picked up an overtime shift working spectral magic after mm -hmm. my morning breakfast shift at the studios. Could have yeah. just driven over, went parked behind the magic kingdom, took the tram over, go on the tunnel and been in the spectral magic parade. Why did I never do that? Too cool. You're too fear, cool. Fear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the, the innovations music loop forever. We now put that on sometimes on our little Alexa echo show in the morning, just to like bring some positive vibes to the day. We start the morning eating breakfast, listening to the innovations music loop. But um, 
before some of the comments get lost, I just wanted to go over a few that some people were dropping. Mm -hmm. The how can you not be romantic about Disney World? Val says, Tink flying in happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, also mentions walking around the train station and seeing the castle the first time on your visit. Mm -hmm. um, Jeffers saying, speaking of happily ever, ever after that initial fanfare. Val mentioning the kiss goodnight audio, which I think we've only like heard once or at least paid attention to or right. something. Yeah. <laughs> One like time. Which is crazy. Me and you, right. It was like a yeah. me and you trip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan mentions Main Street USA at night. Of course, Val says walking down Hollywood Boulevard at hashtag always MGM at night. Um, let me see. Ryan's mentioning the Festival of Fantasy Parade. And so going, okay. I just wanted to make sure I caught up there before. All good ones. Uh, yes, yeah. all good ones. Um, I think you know, obviously, if you know what, if this is your first time listening, um, uh, but if you know, <laughs> welcome to the madness. Oh, welcome. This is it. This is what we do. Um, but if you know us, uh, you know that most of the things we harp on and talk about are all how can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World things. I talk mm -hmm. about the Disney breeze. Mm -hmm. I talk about sitting on a deluxe resort balcony and just taking it all in. We talk about the morning dew. We talk about those night walkouts of the parks. But then I question, and I'll, t I'll go back to you with this. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the... The how can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World things mm -hmm. are strictly like rooted in some sort of nostalgia mm -hmm. or can you have it both? With, can there just be the Disney vibes without the nostalgia or do you need even a twinge of nostalgia to have the Disney vibes? No, I, I'm glad you asked this because I'll give oh. I'll, I'll give you one that I was thinking of and then I forgot okay. it. And I was yeah. like, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. So. Uh, I would say a newer one for me is going into the room before you see the Ray hologram on Rise of the Resistance. When Ray comes up, there is a there is a, a instant immersion for me that mm -hmm. I am I'm in I'm in this world. Yeah, there is, uh, and it's it's the music cue of Ray's theme with the hologram and BB-8 and and. I think that is as good of a moment that you will get. And a lot of what we're, a lot of why we're doing this is because part of the Mets magic here in the last mm -hmm. three weeks was about the story they were telling. Yeah. They were telling it was different stories. There was different plots. Yep. But there were so many stories in this underneath this umbrella of storytelling the Mets were doing about their season that how could you not be romantic about baseball? And to me, Right. A lot of the romantic nature of Walt Disney World or Disney Parks or anything is, you know, when the story is better. It's a little more romantic, I think. And I find that, you know, you wait in line sometimes, sometimes you don't. But I feel like as soon as that Ray hologram comes up and the music plays, I'm like, yes, this is it. Uh, the Force Awakens was on TNT. Oh, you know, they were doing a whole Star Wars marathon as I'm plugged into the cable again, as always, uh, this weekend. And uh, luckily, Mrs. Dillo was out for a little bit. And uh, so the eight year old and I were watching The Force Awakens for like eh, an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> and, you know, that, that I love, I mean, don't get angry in the chat or listening right now, but, you know, if there's, three favorite movies for me of the original star wars empire strikes back it, and and the force awakens it's those three and i would argue the force awakens is two for me just because of how i felt in that movie so then it translates to that attraction for me and i know people have the feelings about galaxy's edge and about the star cruiser and, and, and it varies and it fluctuates and there's just feelings and i'm, I'm not going to argue with those either i think they're justified but there is uh, something about my movie experience seeing the force awakens that translates into that moment that ray appears in that hologram yeah and i uh lewis is mentioning that 
that is that is connected to nostalgia for you um because there's a connection there already i don't know if i'm i don't know if i'm nostalgic for it yet but you, no no but not the ride just star wars in general yeah. well yeah so that's it's bringing mm -hmm. you in yeah um, i think that's what you're saying lewis correct me if i'm wrong but um val mentioning there it can be disney vibes without nostalgia she has seen very small children have that look on their face during attractions and fireworks they are experiencing the disney vibe for the first time um i agree with you val um i I think that's the Disney magic, right? The Disney magic are these Disney vibes yeah. you feel that are unlike many other things. There, there's some things that are outside of Disney that can kind of make you feel a similar way, but there's something about that Disney magic. There's something about those Disney vibes. There is no Disney breeze anywhere else for me. That's a Disney <laughs> breeze. It's a very specific thing. Those, I, I agree, I think for us, probably a lot of our disney vibes is rooted in nostalgia just because of the crazy people we are but i do agree that you can feel the vibes without nostalgia um, yeah i think yeah i think you you know we talk about storytelling but i think magic is a part of it too because mm -hmm. you were seeing some magic with mm -hmm. the baseball and you've seen mm -hmm. you know i I, I question and Ryan, I think, uh, you know, maybe I think football is your, your sport. So, you know, baseball for me is the most magical sport yeah. and you could say, Oh, it's because you played it, you know, or you watch it the most. But I think, you know, people will also argue and it's like, it's the most boring sport. And I just think that depends how you look at it because there is a storytelling element to a baseball game for me that, I would also translate to the things I liked when I was a kid, like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I think there is, you know, you got your hero, you got your villain, you got, I feel like you, oh, you see that in every at bat. If your team is batting, you're <laughs> the pitcher, pitcher is, is the opposing, you know, is the villain in that moment and vice versa. You know, you got a hero on the pitcher's mound for your team pitching against, you know, a legion of uh, Cobra and your GI Joe, like mm -hmm. whatever it is, th those are the things that, you know, I equate to it. It's why I'm a wrestling fan, right? It's hero and antagonist every time. That's that's the constant story being told. I, I look past, I suspend my disbelief at the, you know, sometimes at the, the crazy stuff that happens in wrestling, mm -hmm. but it's the story and, and and there's magic involved. And, you know, in wrestling, the magic is the audience. It's theatrical, right? So there's that audience response that something crazy just happened. It's similar in baseball, right? And you got these home runs, but you also have these, these moments where you know you you see a player pers persevere over the course of nine innings it could be in the first but it could be nine innings later it could mm. be 13 innings later sometimes and you see that story arc sometimes and i think you know the better attractions do have that storytelling but i also think it has there's something there, there's those magical moments I mean, peter pan's flight is two minutes long Mm -hmm. but you're flying over London and how can you not be romantic about Walt Disney world? Mm -hmm. Oh, a thousand percent. I mean that, that I, I don't know if I'm necessarily like, are you nostalgic for Peter Pan's flight? Is it a must do for you every time? I don't know the answer to that, mm -hmm. but there is something in that moment of flying over London mm -hmm. on Peter Pan's flight. We just did it a month ago. I was like, yep. this is the best. Yep. I love it. Nothing has made me madder than seeing Peter Pan's flight online with the lights on. Nothing <laughs> has made me madder. That is right up there with why I avoided the tunnels when I worked there. <laughs> Don't ruin my magic. But also, I have been on the ride since seeing those videos. And you know what? You didn't ruin my magic. I still believe I'm high up in the air. Yeah. I don't think I, I think I'm way off the ground. So there. Take that. Um, I wanted to go back to Star Wars because Ryan mentioned being inside the Millennium Falcon, the mm -hmm. hologram table, and especially the cockpit. Um, and he was uh, feeling you on your talk before because he was watching The Force Awakens last night and still got chills seeing Han and Chewie walk into the Falcon again. Um, Lewis also mentioned stepping over the hill and seeing the tree of life is a pure feel with no need for a connection to something already in your mind. Um, Ryan mentioned seeing kids meeting characters as well. Mm. And Val mentioning she thinks the Disney, the vibes grow and change as we go to Disney each time. And I'm trying to Jeffers is that. saying it was uh, Peter Pan's flight uh, romantic because I was riding with him at Halloween. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jeff, what a romantic flight of Peter Pan we took with the new scene with Tiger Lily for the mm-hmm. first time. It was you and I together just enjoying the flight and cheering on Peter as he fought to save Wendy in 77 seconds of flight time. <laughs> I mean, I think there were moments Troy and I thought, are we going to walk off of this ride? Because I think <laughs> we're stopping. The ride is jerking a little bit. There were a couple of scary moments there. Is that um, your worst nightmare to be walked off that ride because the lights are coming? I think it would. Because, <laughs> again, nothing. I, I want, I've never been walked off a ride. Mm. And I think I'm like, oh, that would kind of be interesting. Not that one, Disney. In 2019, I, I got walked off uh, It's a Small World, and mm-hmm. we got to go on the staircase over there. I, I thought we were going into the Utilidors. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm probably going to get to do it after years. Of being, I haven't been out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeffers, he, and he probably enjoyed that Peter Pan flight. After hearing about your romantic meals with Theme Park Rob, he was getting jealous. <laughs> Speaking of Theme Park Rob, I don't know if you're still here, Rob. I know you were earlier. Um, You know, Back in the day, we did Pockets. We we enjoy mm-hmm. talking about Disney Pockets, which is all under this category of yeah. how can you not be mm-hmm. a romantic about Walt Disney World. Um, and Rob and Maddie went to the park one day and like visited all our pockets. Yeah. And that was at a point where we didn't know Rob as well as we know him now. And I was like, oh, my God. Someone listened to the – I mean, we kind of knew he listened to the podcast. We had interacted with him mm-hmm. a bit. But we were like, someone's like – Going to the parks and visiting the things we talked about? What? Um, but, you know, all those pockets, just being able to sit and hear the sounds and smell the smells and listen to the BGM, background music. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Um, you know, there is something about that that just gives you those Disney vibes. Yeah. Uh, and, and Val mentioned, I mean, obviously, uh, it's a very fine line of nostalgia for Hollywood Studios and hashtag always MGM mm-hmm. and 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 what is what is romantic mm-hmm. to me um, because I've had a lot of magic in different shapes and sizes there, yeah. um, and then there's there's you know then there's just obvious heavy heavy dose of nostalgia. So that's also why I I mentioned the Ray thing more than the Millennium Falcon. Mm-hmm. The Millennium Falcon is just like. This is, you know, childhood hitting me in the face, yeah. uh, you know, so that that feels nostalgic. So I I don't equate it to Rise of Resistance the same way, which is funny. But, you know, the moment, the moment where the the, the lights change and the music swells in Salvi's workshop is you know, mm. you not be romantic yeah. about, uh, about Walt Disney World. Like what? This is it right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, the people mover is not some crazy ride, <laughs> <laughs> but the simplicity of the people mover, the views you get on the people mover, the way it kind of takes you on this little journey around the park into and out of attractions. You get to see a gift shop from it. Just, it's just simple and calming and you, it forces you to stop and take it all in if you won't sit in a pocket of hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of just has you do that. That that people mover at, during the day, fantastic. But that people mover at night, oh, my God, that is amazing. That is just some amazing stuff right there. You can... Uh not have the fireworks going on at this moment, but if you are standing on top of the contemporary mm-hmm. and it is, it can be night. It doesn't have to be that, but you have the monorails coming. Yeah. You have the ferries rolling. Oh, yeah. Maybe you have the electrical water pageant on the water somewhere. You're looking at the magic kingdom. You go, you look to the other way and it's the poly right there. Yeah. You got the grand Floridian right across. And you just, you just have it all right mm-hmm. there. How can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World? Oh, yeah. uh, and I, and I think that's, you know, uh, just seeing the astral orbiter come up in that moment and fly mm-hmm. around. You're like, man, I, I want to go over there. I want to yeah. be inside there. That's, that is, uh, I know you don't need the fireworks for that moment. I mean, 
and people have had very magical moments there on that yeah. one, stuffers. But mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, to me, just and and I I have a connection to that too. I will say, but we had just gone over three years ago. Just you know, we were roaming around, mm -hmm. uh, and we went up to the top of the contemporary and just like looked for like twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, this is it? Mm -hmm. I can play for, pay for a flight and just do this exactly <laughs> for half an hour and be good. Yes. That's all I need. Thanks. Yep. Exactly. I, I'm pretty sure uh, back in my airline days, Mr. Snydello and I did do that where we <laughs> flew in for like a night, stayed somewhere, but went to the to, to California Grill even for dinner and then just stood out there and just were like, oh, just take this in. Yeah. This, is, this is Disney. And yeah. Rob is saying that is Disney World. Like, and you know, there's those same vibes on the boardwalk as well. They're the lights and the friendship boats, and you know, at, at times the the boardwalk is a little um um loud louder than others, depending on what might be going on. But like walking around that boardwalk and hearing those friendship boats and seeing them and the reflections of the water and all the things. Mm -hmm. it's good. It's so good. Do you, I, I have one that I think we can end on. I know we're an hour in and yes. you know, 39 minutes of it was about the Mets. But <laughs> Do uh, we need to talk about Pete Alonso now? Is that what we're on? <laughs> do you have one you want to I have one that I think we should close on. But I, I mean, we talk about the boardwalk, at uh -huh. night, obviously. And just walking around that area is is its own vibe. Yeah, that, that I don't know. Maybe I need to try to to do some vibing, like Dr. J said. Oh yes, you need um, to vibe mm -hmm. uh, on the boardwalk. At some Am point. I doing it? Am I vibing on the boardwalk? <laughs> uh, so and uh, yeah, and I think people know what some of ours are because of the pockets, because of mm -hmm. where we go every time we're there. Yeah. Um. So they're easy ones, uh, but because it's newer, I I want to talk about uh the new beacons of light spaceship earth, you know, moment oh, yeah. that happened because mm -hmm. we did. I mean, I, thank God Lexi was like, I'm stopping and I'm not, I'm, I'm going to look at spaceship earth for a while. And I was like, I think we all should do that. Yeah. Like, Why wouldn't we do that? Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, for something that has changed and we don't like change. And, mm -hmm. and people, if you listen regularly, you know that we are in favor of the change. Yeah. But that, that is a, Pretty big change to not have the purple hue on Spaceship Earth after mm -hmm. it being there for decades. Forever. And to have it be what it is and still be able to give you the goosebumps and the hair on end and the and the vibes and the feels. And I mean, for all the things that we go, Disney, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. That is something that somehow within that 50th anniversary where a lot of things went sideways, they stuck the landing on and and continue to tweak and play and evolve it and grow it a little bit in a way that still hits and still gives you those feels. Yeah, a hundred percent that. Um, and as you're talking about it, you know, something that's coming to mind is it's just a simple change. And again, I think. A lot of the vibes, a lot of the things, you know, the, the tree of life in Animal Kingdom, Lewis, is an amazing piece of art and mm -hmm. and so detailed. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's this it's this grand thing, but it's also like the tree. A mm -hmm. tree is going to be our icon. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's like a simple thought but they made it this magical thing. It's not right. just a tree. It's not, mm -hmm. and it's welcoming, welcoming you to the park and it's giving you those feels as you come over that hill. When I say the people mover is a simple ride. It's not a roller coaster. It's not something too flashy. And most of the time it's not even working. I love it because it's simple. And to me, the beacons of light on spaceship earth is just like, this is so simple. You're just, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, obviously. I, I know there a lot of work goes into it. I'm not taking away from the work that goes yeah. into the behind the scenes of it. But, like, you're dancing lights on a big ball and putting some music to it. And it's glorious. Mm -hmm. It is so amazing. And I could sit there all night and watch it. Mm -hmm. And, again, when you think of Walt Disney World to people that have never gone to Walt Disney World, 
you think like so you go to disney world you go on these you go on roller coasters do you eat turkey legs do you do and it's like there's so much of the how can you not be romantic about walt disney world stuff that is rooted not so much in nostalgia but in the simplicity of things and in being able to take it all in and appreciate the the art the music the sounds the smells and all of it and uh yeah that's a that's a change i think we are a hundred percent on board with yeah and and i'm glad you brought back in the tree of life since Mm -hmm. lewis mentioned it earlier in the chat because it is and you know even even the changes to cinderella's castle over the Mm -hmm. years have been not the birthday cake back when i was a cast member but not you birthday cake (laughs) (laughs) but (laughs) but you know it's still it's amazing to me how the the landscape in front changed over the mm-hmm. years, you know, the creation of the hubs, the angles in which you, there's pictures I look at of the castle and uh, still going back three, four years and just go, look at this angle of the castle. The mm-hmm. castle looks so awesome here. Yeah. And, and you know, for, again, we're, uh, we don't like to change. We need our nostalgia, things mm-hmm. like that. There, There's these things that happens the right way. Yeah. And and they often are just simple. It's a, a different shade of color, mm-hmm. you know, a different shade of blue somehow makes Cinderella's castle look a little more majestic, um, you know. And I and I think that way, and, and it's true with the Tree of Life. It is that coming over that. I'm not a fan, obviously, of the parking lot walk and, and the initial walk inside. <laughs> once you once you scan your ticket, I'm not here to hate on the Animal Kingdom, <laughs> but when you come over that bridge and uh-huh. and and you take a if you take a little bit of time there at the Tree of Life, you know, obviously, you can walk around, look at the sculptures, all the things. I mean that that area. In some ways, I wish some of the things I like about. Animal Kingdom, Nomad things. I wish, I wish they were a little more closer. That you had like the angle of the Tree of Life. Mm-hmm. I think that that would be cool, you know. And, and you know, I I know that uh, Landon and and the Smoking Hot Girlfriend were at Flame Tree. Which when we walked past Flame Tree, I was like, Can I get a seat that looks at the tree? Is that an angle? Mm-hmm. I don't. Think that works. Yeah. Ruth and Val maybe can tell me. But I'm like, I, that that. I think that would be also something that would get me on board with Animal Kingdom is having more placement with that. With that view. I, like I like Dawa Bar too. And mm-hmm. it, it's a little like, it's not exactly you're in the marketplace. It's not, I feel like I need something that would connect me more to the center of that park. And yeah. I think that's, that's something we come back to a lot, you know, with Hollywood studios, it has to go to MGM. It's, it is that walk out at night. It is mm-hmm. that walk in the morning too but it's it's that it it it, it symbolizes years of that park in mm-hmm. you know, all this castle and spaceship earth their own thing but i do think tree of life uh and, and people can yell at me here in the chat if you want uh, and say what are you talking about this is over here and if you look at this mm-hmm. point, you see the tree i might be missing lots of things mm-hmm. but, we probably are yeah but yeah. i know when i'm sitting at nomad lounge and i've been in there three times now whatever it is that I wish I wish I saw more than I yeah. see when I'm in Nomad Lounge. Right. Yeah. That. I mean, I think if it is and Lewis and Val, I feel like you are the experts. Um, it, is there a place now? Because if there's not, there should be where you kind of there's this one view. I think it's um, it's not on the bridge, but there's another bridge where you have the water and then Everest in the background. And I love that like shot of the water with Everest and all of yeah. it. Like uh, the views in Animal Kingdom are very cool. And I yeah. agree. If you could get like a, a water and also a tree of life shot, like that yeah. would that would be really cool. Um yeah. the trail around Tree of Life does that for Val. There are some places you can hang and see it that it's just so special. Yeah. I want I know I said I was gonna end on spaceship earth and, and we're clearly lying right now. But I do want to make a special mention of one, the Topolino's Terrace, because I yeah. think that whole experience is similar to being on top of the contemporary, but uh, it, it's newer. So mm-hmm. there isn't a nostalgia attachment necessarily to that. So that that's definitely one thing to uh, make mention of. Uh, but you know, uh, the tiki lights when they're lit around the Polynesian. Yeah. Oh my God. Forget it. I and mean, that's how can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World? I don't care how much that hotel costs each night. Mm-hmm. You walk around those pathways 
and it is uh, Walt Disney World romance at its finest. I don't think anything tops that. I don't think, for me personally, I don't think anything tops the tiki lights and the pathways at the Polynesian at night. Yeah, ooh, it's the best. That that I mean, that's that's really, that's really. I mean, I did it in the meetup last month. That I walked out the side entrance over by Trader Sam's, and I walked a long mm-hmm. way around the pool. I thought I'd get the, get. It. To where I needed to be quicker, I didn't. But I walked a long way around the pool. But <laughs> half about halfway through the walk, I was like, "Oh, I really don't care. I really mm-hmm. just looking at the tiki torches and loving it. Mm-hmm. So good." Um, but that will wrap things up here on the Theme Park Thursday podcast. Technically, technically, the last one before in your forties. Oh God! Oh. Say goodbye to your forties. Take this moment to say goodbye. <sighs> To you as a podcaster in your 40s. Is there any chance the Dodgers will forfeit their National League Championship Series and the Mets can continue playing so that I can forget about the next week or so? No, I think it's time to embrace it. As <laughs> you you have to embrace the change that's about to happen. Oh, my God. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who knows what else we'll do over uh, streaming wise and things like that. Uh, I know that Mrs. Dillo is out for uh, some, <laughs> some nights here. So, which is why we got a little game Four national league championship series commentary. I don't know. I kind of like doing the baseball commentary. So part of me is like, Oh God, mm-hmm. not, maybe I'll do more of these than I did Peloton rides. <laughs> I mean, it's funny that Jeffers brought it up because as you were doing that live that night, I'm like, hey, what happened to those Peloton runs? I forgot oh, about those. Just couldn't couldn't do it. I, uh, I don't know. It's the placement. I don't know. I don't feel I don't want to get into it right now. We're wrapping up the podcast. <laughs> but who knows what else will uh happen along the way here? Dr. Val is asking before we go if we are all meeting at Pop this weekend. We'll hang out at Petals. Yeah, that'd be uh, good. How can you not be romantic about Walt Disney World? Mm-hmm. Uh, until next time, she's Jen, and I'm Frank. Bye bye. Deuces. The Dillos Diz podcast is hosted by Frank Cardillo and Jen Cardillo Snyder. Music produced by Matt Harvey. Logos and video production courtesy of Snydillo Studios. Dillo's Diz Resort is our Patreon with tiers starting as low as $1 per month. You can visit dillosdizresort.com to learn more. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, X Twitter, and Facebook at Dillo's Diz. Check us out on YouTube by visiting youtube.com slash dillosdiz. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're there. We also have merch available on TeePublic and Etsy. For all this and more, visit our one-stop shop, dillosdiz.com. Dillosdiz Podcast 2024.